Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, it's called Getting Paid. Um, my name is Steve Richardson. I'm a director at, at Inspire and I'm going to be your moderator today. Um, so for those of you who um, aren't familiar with, with webinars, um, at the bottom here is, are the Zoom settings. Um, so let's take a closer look at the, the controls. Um, so as far as um, speakers are concerned, everybody's on mute. Um, and if you'd like to submit a question, then at the bottom here, there's a Q&A box. Just click on that, type your question in, and um, we'll get to, to those at the, the end of the webinar. And of course, if you have to leave at any time, um, then you just click the, the leave meeting on the right here. Um, and away you go. So, um, can I introduce um, our presenter today? Um, also a director at Inspire, um, my partner Steve Price. Um, so Steve, over to you. Hello, good afternoon. Thanks very much, Steve. And thanks everyone for taking the time to come on and join our webinar this afternoon. We appreciate that these are difficult times and there's a lot of uncertainty around at the moment and that causes concern. But we want you to know that we're here for you, albeit remotely, and we're gonna try and give you whatever support we can, get, we can get to you to get through these difficult times. Now, over the last few weeks, as, you know, as we've entered this, into this crisis period, we've had many, many client conversations and all of them at some point have touched on the subject of cash flow. So our, 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 our core purpose at Inspire is centered around making a positive impact. So it made an obvious choice to us to run this webinar today. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and share with you some practical things you can do to minimize the downside of your cash flow at this time. So put very briefly in terms of an agenda, we're gonna start by running through some very important required mindsets in these difficult times. We're gonna take a look at your debtor system uh, albeit a slightly different type of data system while you're working from home. Um, some of the lessons we can take today and use into the future, some of the support that's available in the meantime and what your next steps are. Steve's already said, if you do want to use the chat facility to post any questions, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be able to deal with those at the end. Okay, so let's get started. So, <clears throat> Cash flow is something that you should never really take your eye off. And before we talk about the strategies that you're going to use in your cash flow, let's talk about three particular mindsets that we've picked out that you're really going to have to have at these times. So you're going to need to be empathetic. You're going to need to approach your debtor management with what, we, what we're starting to call backbone and heart. And also, thirdly, the third one is to talk about it's still okay to sell in these times. As long as you're solving problems for your customers, it's still okay to, to, to sell. Uh, there's, there's some customers where they're, they're saying, well, you know, perhaps we shouldn't be selling at these times. All our clients are really struggling. Is it the right thing to sell? Perhaps we should be giving things away. As long as you're still solving problems, then it's still okay to sell in these times. In fact, it's absolutely paramount that you do. And just remember, keep referring in these webinars back to the analogy of the oxygen mask in the time of an emergency. Put your own oxygen mask on first, because if your business fails or falls over, then nobody's going to win. So let's have a look at the first of these, um, these, these mindsets. And this is empathy. So of course, it's not, credit control is not just as simple as saying the customers pay now or we're not prepared to do anything and there are some horror stories going around at the moment you know of people who are stopping credit or ramping up their debt collection which isn't really helping anyone or anything at the moment obviously i'm, I'm hoping that's nobody on there on today's webinar so before we work out the best way to keep the cash flow flow going what we need is a framework and this framework's got to start with empathy. And we define this as the ability to see things from your customer's perspective and be prepared to do something about it. So hence the idea of giving customers options as to how they can pay you. So, you know, 
you need to start by talking to the customers about how they're coping. Ask how their business is going at the moment. The chances are their problems and fears are very much aligned with what yours are as well. Consider the loyalty that they've shown you over the years. What sort of a relationship do you already have? And give your, option, give your customers options wherever you can. Give them some options about how they can pay you. So let's talk about having backbone and heart. So long as we are being empathetic and giving clients choices, we can talk about how we're then going to get paid. So a useful mindset here is to remember to have backbone and heart. And it's, it's backbone and heart. You're going to need a combination of both. Backbone is sharing that you're also running a business and you need the cash flow. You need to be paid for you to protect your own cash flow. And heart is being empathetic to be flexible and considerate in your approach. So what you're going to need to do is to make judgments about when to show backbone and when to show heart or potentially who to show backbone to and who to show heart to. Then the final mindset is this spin cycle here. So especially if you're a service provider, just remember it is okay still to sell. So long as your product or service is solving a problem for your customers and so long as you're going to get paid the work that you, sorry, get paid for the work that you do. And so this spin cycle here, SPIN as it goes round, is a line of questions starting with situation questions and then moving on through the problem questions, et cetera, et cetera, around the circle. So let's use an example to go through this. Let's say, for example, you are a fitness instructor or perhaps even a coach or a consultant. It's all a series of questions about how you can create sales. So for instance, the situation question might be along the lines of, this is a fitness instructor to their clients. How is your fitness training progressing? Now you cannot get to the courses or classes during the lockdown period. That leads on to problem questions. Are you starting to lose your fitness? Once we have a problem, we then move on to the impact. The impact question is, is, is this potentially starting to make you feel lethargic or groggy? Are you losing your personal drive? And having, a, this, having developed the situation through the problem onto the impact, we can then understand what the needs are. And the needs obviously can then be addressed by sales. So having gone through those questions, we can then start to say, well, perhaps you'd like to join my new online fitness club. It may not have the same impact as the usual classes we do, but it will help you, help you maintain your fitness and keep your drive through this period. Or even further, we could say, look, once we're through this lockdown period, perhaps I can register you for one of our one-to-one -one personal fitness assessments or a personal training plan to get you back on track. So we've started with the current situation and having worked through the problems and the impact, delivered a need upon which we can sell. So it's just an example. It's a very simple example. But what's important is that it's absolutely okay still to sell. So long as you're, off, as you're linking your offering as a way of solving a current problem for your customers. Okay, so if we've, if we've got those three mindsets in place, we can talk more specifically now about the debtor system in these challenging times. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about best practice. I'm going to share a guide and some scripts with you, and then I'll go um, over some credit, con credit control processes. Okay, so let's talk about best practice. Well, really, nothing should be changing right now. All we're really saying is that you really just need to engage your empathy. And by engaging more with your customers around their particular circumstances, you can tweak your processes just for the customers who are going to struggle. Remember, not all of your customers are at great risk here. COVID-19 should not give them an excuse not to pay you. You've done the work, you're running a business too, and you need to be paid. Secondly, hopefully, Everybody who's on this webinar today is running a paperless system. If not, you are going to struggle right now in this particular period. And to convert to a paperless system of invoicing must be an absolute top priority for you. Or your, your customers are sim simply not going to get invoiced. And that obviously is a, is a huge problem for credit control. Then best practice credit control is that you have 
great guidance notes for your team members responsible for, for who are doing the credit control. Things like flowcharts, scripts, and templates. And we're going to show you some of these because we've put some of these together for you to, uh, to use off the back of this um, webinar this afternoon. And then many problems come about with debtors because we've not put systems in place about giving the right credit in the first place. Sometimes we talk about credit control about after the invoice has been raised and after the debt has accumulated, but actually there's, there's an, an element of proactive um, credit control that can be done, which starts with credit checking right from the, right from the start. So we're gonna talk about credit checking and outsourcing, and I'll cover those in more detail very shortly. So here's a snippet of the guide and the credit control we've put together. So we're happy to share this with you and, uh, and send this out following on from this seminar. So if I can just swap over into PDF, here is the um, credit management guide. It's a document that we've put together. And as I say, it's something that we're very happy to, uh, to send out to you after today's um, webinar. So we go through, I'm just briefly going to cover this. Um, there's, there's not enough time to go through it in detail. It's something that you can read through for yourself. But it starts with an overview, starts to talk about the terms of trade. This might be with your customers and or your suppliers. Some very valuable notes now on billing and payments which includes your payment terms. Detailed notes there into debtor management. Okay, and through into the additional strategy to maximize prompt payment and then the next steps for you. In addition to that, what we've also got is some um, credit controller or accounts receivable call scripts as well. So what we tried to do is create various scenarios where you're in conversation or email with one of your customers who owes you money and dependent on how they might respond, if they're receptive or not receptive to your answers, which avenues can go down. This isn't necessarily intended to be given to somebody parrot fashion but it gives you a course to go down and if you're a larger firm it does ensure that your staff or your team can be consistent with each other again this is full of what we describe empathetic responses because we believe that's probably the best way throughout this um, process at the moment so let me flip back to the slideshow And it's important to remember that credit control is not just about following up your debtors. Credit control is a complete system from when you take on a customer right through to when they pay you. As mentioned previously, we recommend that you outsource your credit management. It's not only that this is good practice, it also is going to free up your time as well. It's essential that you build a relationship with the credit control provider that you choose though. So because what you really want is for them to be able to understand your style of communication, the language that you use. You certainly don't want anybody who's, who's not compatible with that. And having said that, a word, just a word of caution. So outsourcing is best practice, but it's not an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. Especially in the current climate, you can't suddenly outsource credit management for customers who are going to really struggle is it's just going to cause you brand damage for you and the credit controller. It's just going to waste everybody's time. So this idea of an ambulance at the bottom of the cliff, don't just bring in something too little too late. So that's why we've also developed the content that I've just been showing you in terms of the script so that you can start to, to bring on some of these yourselves if you don't already have outsourced credit control. And also our cash flow management coaching service is a great way to drill down even further and to make sure you have the best systems in place to free up your cash flow. So when we talk about credit checks, here's who we can recommend for you to contact for your credit checks um, for your new customers. I'm sure you've heard of one or more of these at least. Um, credit checking should be a part, it should be a, a part of your standard procedures anyway. Um, it's very much overlooked these days by small businesses and so is credit insurance as well. But re really, these are the, the certainties you can, you can start to bring in proactively by credit checking your clients and then possibly even taking insurance out as well. So we've talked about best practice with your debtors. 
and how to avoid working for people who aren't going to be able to pay you anyway. Now it's time to talk about what you need to be doing going forward. What you need to be doing in order to maximize your cash flow. So you can see the list on the, on the screen. Some of these concepts you may have heard before, especially if you did come to our business continuity planning webinar um, a couple of weeks ago, we did touch on some of these. These six topics here, mine and Steve's conversations have been full of these the last two or three weeks. We have had one way or another, we've been talking about these topics um, endlessly with clients. So let's just have a look at them. We're going to talk about the cash conversion cycle. <clears throat> We're going to talk about what we've named the business 101 cycle. Moving on to the seven causes of uh, poor cash flow and, and, and what to do about those. Then we're going to have a look at what can you do quickly, getting runs on the board, as the critics might say. What can we do now to take positive impact in our own business cash flow? And then we'll go on to have a look at what perhaps the banks can assist with. And again, we've talked about it already in more than a few webinars, but what support is there, there from the government? What can help us with our own cash flow right now? Okay, so let's talk about the cash cons conversion cycle. It's one of the most important ways to improve our businesses to shorten the cash conversion, conversion cycle. So in other words, how to get our cash quicker. And what's really important in, in times of crisis like this is that all businesses speed up this conversion cycle so that the economy keeps working. So it's okay saying we're just going to pay our suppliers a little bit slower but that, you know, they're probably in the same place as you. And actually, if everybody does that in industry, what we're actually doing is slowing up the economy. So let's have a look at the cash conversion cycle in a slightly more depth using this example. So in this particular example, we have a business who on day naught buy some stock in. And on average, for whatever reason, they will be holding that stock for 60 days. Now they have negotiated or arranged 45, pay, 45 day payment terms with their suppliers. So what's happening is 45 days in we pay our suppliers, 60 days in, that stock is still sat in our, um, in our warehouse, in our, in, our own, in our own stock. On 60 days, on average across the board, we then sell that stock across to our customers. According to this cash conversion model here for this particular example business, we then take another 60 days on average to get paid by our customers. What that says is we have a 120 day cycle before that stock which lands with us actually gets paid for. When we look at the cash conversion cycle, we have 60 days stock holding, 60 days debtor, um, debtor days as we call it, debtor waiting less the 45 days that we're allowed to take from our suppliers, which means we have a cash conversion cycle of 75 days. It takes us 75 days to convert incoming cash. Sorry, it, sorry. it takes us 75 days to convert the inputs we get into the business into incoming cash. Now, obviously that's a very long period. And this is this cash conversion cycle sits right at the heart of cash flow management because we can manage various different um, factors in order to overall bring this, bring this cycle down. Incidentally, this obviously looks at a product um, based firm which buys in stock. But actually, if I was to rename that as what you might call work in progress, this whole analogy, this whole example can quite easily be used for a service based business as well. So work in progress would be the time it takes us to work on a project before invoicing the customer. It's the same principle. And as I say, in difficult times such as these, we need to ensure we have a plan in place to shorten this cash conversion cycle. This is a process we would recommend you do as part of your business continuity plan. And using the numbers from your most recent management accounts, we can work out what, what all these above numbers are and calculate your cash conversion cycle for you. From there, we can discuss with you how we can work together towards shortening this cycle. And that's gonna help you free up more cash. Just to put a little bit of perspective on this, let me give you a numerical example. If your debt is a 50,000 pounds, your turnover is £500,000 a year, then if you're able to reduce this cycle by 10 days, 
you're going to put £13,700 back as a positive injection into your cash. That's 13700 into your bank account right now, based upon those numbers. It doesn't take that much action to generate real positives, but you've got to do the analysis. And so what we do, what we recommend is that you incorporate a review of your cash conversion cycle, as I say, as part of your business continuity plan. And that's, you know, that's going to help you free up as much cash flow as possible. Okay, so the business 101 cycle is something I had also touched on when we, when we did our earlier webinar on business continuity planning. And another area of focus to improve your cash flow needs to be on this particular cycle, the business 101 cycle. As accountants will often say, there's a massive difference between profit and cash. Profit is what you pay your tax on, but it's cash that is the oxygen that your business needs to survive. What's so important here is that as well as improving your cash conversion cycle, you make plans to maximize your profit at the same time, because this is what's going to finance your business correctly. So what is the business 101 cycle? Okay, well, it starts at the top left here when the owner introduces cash into the business, usually to buy assets. Now, okay, the, the assets can be bought on finance themselves. That might be HP or lease finance. But generally, you, you, take, you, you, you invest money in order to buy assets. And the reason you do that is assets are generally used to generate profits. How you increase profit is either to improve your revenue or sales, which obviously is going to be very difficult in these times, or increasing margin or efficiency, or perhaps by trimming overhead expenses. So now's a very good time to be looking closely at potential new revenue lines, potential new customers, pivoting your sales strategy, or doing whatever you can to avoid losing existing customers. And at the same time, you really should be looking at how you can improve margins or efficiency gains, better purchasing, etc., all to increase profit. But once you've derived your profit, the spin cycle keeps moving on. Because once you've derived your profit, you need to turn that into cash. Even profitable businesses can and do go broke at times like these. You need to be looking at how you can maximize your cash flow using strategies to get paid quicker or perhaps reducing stock or work in progress or by negotiating better payment terms with your suppliers. Now isn't the time to be lenient on debt collection. Other areas to help improve your cash flow are through, better, through arriving at better terms with your banks and perhaps the, the, the government as well. And we touched on that earlier. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go into detail with that shortly. But first of all, let's have a look at the seven causes of poor cash flow. So let's have a look at each one by one. Most of these have already been covered in the two preceding um, slides. So let's have a look at them. We've got the accounts receivable process. This sits right at the heart of our cash flow. How we deal with and how we are able to get paid for the work we've done from our customers is absolutely paramount, paramount to us maintaining our own positive cash flow. Likewise, we have the accounts payable process. This is the same thing on the flip side, negotiating and dealing with our own suppliers. Number three forces us to look more internally. So if you're a product business, we talk about stock or inventory. And if you're a service based business, largely speaking, we talk about WIP or work in progress. We need to make sure that we're not guilty ourselves of slowing down our own cash conversion cycle. Are we taking too long on jobs? Are we buying in products that sit in stock for too long? taking up precious liquid cash funds. These are, these are reviews we have to take. And there's no finger pointing at our customers or suppliers. We need to look at ourselves and manage, manage those cycles down as much as possible. Number four is um, a, a little bit of a more broader aspect. And this is to have a look at how our company is structured, whether that be through capital or debt or a mixture of both. Has it got the right capital structure at the moment? Number five is, um, is, in principle, is an easy one. Overheads are too high. But in, in, in actual fact, this should be something that's constantly done, regardless of the, the current crisis at the moment. 
Remember, at the moment, if we have seen sales reduced, it's quite natural that some of our overheads will be too high. What we need to understand is how fixed they are as costs or whether they can in fact be flexed in the short term. We talked about this in a, in a, to some great extent as part of the business continuity planning. Then we look towards our gross profit margin being too low. Our gross, our gross profit margin is what brings in surplus cash. If we're not able to sustain a high enough profit, then that, apart from making us um, not as profitable as we want to be, it also has a compounded effect by negatively affecting our, our cash flow as well. So we need to understand what our margins are. And then the final one, number seven, the sales are too low. And again, that can all, all too often be the case at times like these because we've seen some of our revenue drop off. And number seven can often be the flip side of, of uh, number five. Overheads are too high because sales have dropped off. Part of our cash flow management coaching service involves a full review of each of these seven causes of poor cash flow. So that together we can make a plan to free up as much cash as possible. We've got, we've got extensive resources we can share with you throughout this process so that you can implement the ideas that you want to to help have this positive influence. So, okay, so there's some, some strategies and some ideas, but how do we pull all of this together in a meaningful way in the current climate and into the future? So let's have a look at these one by one. Let's start to outsource credit management where we can. Obviously, we need to be careful because if we suddenly enlist the services of a credit controller or debt collector with customers who we know are going to struggle, then we do risk relationship damage or brand damage. You have to be very careful in that. But at the same time, don't let customers use the current crisis as an excuse not to pay you. This comes back backbone and heart. Secondly, revise your terms of trade and proposals. Make sure you don't perpetuate poor practice into the future. Once again, we've got plenty of ideas we can share with you on a one-to-one -one basis if you want as part of our cash flow management service. The strategies you adopt here need to be tailored for your particular business. Also remember to have a look at your billing process. Try and get customers onto repeating or automated invoices where you can so that you'll never slow or off the mark in getting your invoices out. I know that is so often a problem in businesses and it really shouldn't be at all with all the software that's available to us these days. And so that moves us on to the next point. And with so much cloud-based technology, now is a great time to be looking at how you can automate a lot of your processes. This is gonna free up your cash flow and free up your time. It's a double win. As well as repeating invoices, consider how you can move your proposal or quoting process to an online option as well. It's going to get you some very, very easy wins. And last but by no means least, let's take a look at your management controls and procedures about spending money and invoicing. For example, you might want to start setting um, limits about what purchases can be had. Um, consider how you can reduce your levels of stock or improve your efficiency in operations. Whatever you do, don't keep working for customers who don't pay. You're running a business and right now, you need to reduce your risk wherever you can. So one of, one of sometimes what we see is the highest overhead in a business is the interest costs to banks or lenders. And if you add the capital repayments to these loans as well. It's often these that are, you know, have, there are massive drains sometimes on businesses through cash flow going out. So here's a list of ways we can talk to banks or lenders um, and how they might be able to help you. So potentially we can talk about increasing temporary overdraft facilities. We can talk about reviewing and extending trade creditors. So that's moving perhaps, um, you know, away from the bank and various other lending facilities. Asset funding can be, can be used here. The use of holiday payments, um, that's been talked about a lot through the last um, few, uh, few months, both on a domestic basis, but also on a business rate basis as well. Perhaps we could go on to an interest only period for a fort, short term by negotiation. Extension of, of term lending periods short-term hardship loans, short-term mortgage holidays, or business credit card options. To be fair, we've heard a lot more about 
the facility for this in the domestic market. So for us as individuals, for our, for our own personal finances, but negotiation can sometimes help you achieve this from a business point of view as well. What we, what we know now is when, when Boris Johnson first stood up and pledged 330 billion of funding towards helping this virus, a lot of that, amount of money was pledged through what's called the C-Bills um, scheme, the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme. And for the first 10 days, that was nigh on useless, nigh on useless to all businesses because the banks made it impossible to achieve any lending. It was reformed. It was reformed after just short of two weeks and it's made big differences. Time will tell as to whether it's adequate to get the finance running back into the business. But certainly C-bills, these business, in, business interruption loans, which have um, interest-free holidays and sometimes um, repayment holidays as well, up to a period of 12 months, backed with the, um, the relaxation of the need for personal guarantees from, from the directors, for viable businesses, these can be an absolute lifeline right now. And it's what we've spent a lot of the last week to, since, since the system was, um, was reformed. It's what we've talked um, to a lot of businesses about. And we've partnered up with people as well so that we can start to hopefully allow our, um, our clients to make use of these. And then we need to have a look at the government support and tax considerations. Now, as, as most of you will know, we've run specific webinars just on these subjects. We've given a lot of specific detail on those. For anybody who's missed those particular webinars or feels that even now they don't know the, uh, the, the, the support that might be out there and available to them, then please do get in contact with us. You can do that via phone or email. But also we have a YouTube channel now where we've got repeats of the, of the webinars that we've done. Just very briefly then, in context of today's webinar, I'll just run through um, what I'm hoping you will already know, but businesses can, um, can benefit from a deferral of VAT pay payments for the current period. That's not something you need to negotiate. That's something you simply don't need to pay for the current period up to the end of June. We've had increase, increases in working tax credits in universal um, credits, which is something a lot of the self-employed um, sector are making use of. We've had changes to statutory sick pay, which include businesses being able to be repaid the statutory sick pay back from the government. And then the big one, the job retention scheme and the whole concept of furloughing workers. Again, if you're unaware of how you can use this as a method to receive grants from the, from the government, and a lifeline of cash flow into your business, then you really should be contacting us as soon as possible. But I think most people who have staff now understand what they can and can't do in this respect. And the government actually, in this case, are being incredibly generous in repaying 80% of, um, up to a limit to be fair, but 80% of um, employed workers' salaries to protect them from otherwise potentially being made redundant from businesses. As I say, we've got the, the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, which has become known as C-bills. And then in certain sectors, there are business rates, holidays, and even cash grants um, available. So again, I'll just make the case. I'm hoping that everybody on today's webinar is well aware of these. You might not be aware of the details, but you do need to have an overview of what support is available to, to you. And please do contact us if you feel like you don't have a, a good grasp of that. So what are your next steps? So, okay, well, we've set out for you the mindsets that we think that you need to have in these difficult times. We think that you need to be empathetic. We think that you need to have backbone and heart around debt collecting, and you need to avoid shying away from selling. We've shared best practice about credit control and debtors collection, and we've even introduced you to, some, uh, to a guide and some scripts that you can use. We've covered how to free up as much cash flow as possible by looking closely at your cash flow conversion cycle and the business 101 model. And we've looked at the seven causes of poor cash flow and how you can get runs on the board quickly to improve your cash flow, including what, is, what support is available from, from the bank and from the government. But now it's essential that you decide what you're going to do. As I've said before, and I think we'll keep saying doing nothing is almost never an option. However, this 
crisis is affecting your business it will be affecting it to some extent and doing nothing is not an option now's the time again i'll use the the oxygen mask analogy now's the time to put this oxygen mask on yourself and make a plan to get yourself and your business through this crisis because even if that plan is about you closing your business temporary hibernation at least it's a plan and actually it's better to make these decisions sooner rather than later if in fact your cash flow forecast dictates that that's the best um, course of action to take it's still a plan doing nothing will leave you exposed in no man's land part of your plan should be to surround yourselves with experts people who can help you get through these and who have ex expert knowledge in the various different areas you might consider that's your accountant you might consider that somebody in in hr etc and remember, always focus on what you can do. And so with this in mind, we've developed this guide to credit control and some detailed scripts for debtor management that you can have. And we're going to give those away, um, obviously free of, free of charge to all of you who've been on this webinar. What we want to share with you now is how we can help you even more. So for those of you who have been listening to all our webinars, you will already be aware of some of the resources that we've been giving away free of charge if you're not aware of these please do come to us we've got um when you leave this um, webinar today it's going to take you straight to a survey page if you want to fill that in you've got an option to um, to ask for any of the free resources that you want and we will get those across to you via email so what we do have is a complete resource pack to build your own business continuity plan we've got a template you can use for building your own cash flow forecast we're very happy to spend time with, our, with, with members of our team in which we can spend 30 minutes with you building what we're calling, calling a rapid action plan. Now these have been invaluable through the, the last couple of weeks in which there's been um, something approaching panic. But as we get more into a planning stage over the next few weeks, again, these will give you maximum value to understand and to get our feedback on perhaps what the best courses of action are. Um, and we've labeled those rapid action plans. And then the resources that we're giving away as from today, the credit management guide and the credit control scripts. Furthermore, there are enhanced services we can do. Everything I've talked about so far comes absolutely free of charge. But I want to tell you where, what other um, services we can provide and are providing at this time. So if you want us to take you through the full business continuity planning, in a session and we've already got clients lined up for this it's something we'd normally charge 1200 pounds for and we're doing those at half price we can allow in order to reduce costs we can allow you to build your own plan and then we can hold a review meeting with you okay so that as you can see again it's half price it's down at 175 we can provide a complete three-way forecast which is the cash flow the profit and loss and the balance sheet cash flow uh, sorry the cash flow, the profit and loss, and the balance sheet forecast, again, it's still half price. These will be absolutely critical if you're wanting bank assistance at the moment. The bank under the C-bill scheme are wanting this level of detail in your forecast going forward. I've alluded to it a couple of times. We can help you and manage you through your own cash flow in your business. Now, I'll be honest, this is something that perhaps should be done day to day anyway today's um environment today's economy and today's crisis only only highlights the need for sessions like this but you can come along to our first initial session again it's half price you can choose to take one of those with us when we can get into this and show you how we can help you in a lot greater detail and then Again, we've been asked by many clients, and I think this is going to continue for the next few months. If you want us to help you, and this includes the, the number three here, the forecast, if you want to help us, if you want us to help you with the silver C bills application, again, we will we will give you a price and application for that, but we that's something else we can do as well. Okay, Steve. Um, over to you. Do, have we have we been asked any questions throughout this uh, throughout this webinar? I think we should both turn uh, our videos on as well. Sorry, should have said that. Thanks, Steve. That was exceptionally good. 
Um, very interesting, really good advice. Um, yes, uh, I know you've got some questions. Um, I have one for Phil. Um, it, it's about the price increase. Um, he's just about to announce a eight percent price increase due to to his uh, increased input costs. Phil, it, it's clearly you know a difficult and a sensitive time for everyone. But but having said that, I think personally you've got a responsibility to your business, um, and and generally um, you have to pass on increased costs because otherwise it's going to impact on your profit. Um, at a time when when you need that profit the most, I would suggest. Um, I've always believed that that the price comes secondary to value. Um, if you can demonstrate the value um, in your service or your product, then I think um, price resistance becomes much less of an issue. Um, I hope that helps. Um, Steve, over to you. I think also, you know. If you need to pass on a price increase, that's absolutely um, essential that you do that. But it's, but it's how you do it. And this comes back to this point of emp empathy. You know, what you're asking about doing to your customer is what your supplier has done to you. To some extent, you're only being reactive here. You're only, mm -hmm. um, you're, only, you're only passing that on. How you do it and how you communicate that and how you maintain the relationship is ultimately how successful you're going to be at doing this. But again, maybe if the prices are going up and you're giving that to somebody who's really struggling, maybe it's the terms of trade or maybe it's the, the way you get payment where you can perhaps have a different leverage conversation in which you can perhaps be given customers who are genuinely struggling a little bit more extra wriggle room. Yeah, Steve, is it over to me for, for a different question then, the one I was sent in earlier on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, er earlier than the webinar, I was sent in a question, and it just talks about a business that has lost 75% of its revenue right now and isn't able to trade. What are they supposed to do? So, it, that line aren't able to operate right now, aren't able to trade. That's That's obviously very concerning at the moment. And generally what we're finding is there's two levels to these plans. One is short-term survival. To some extent, we've already had sort of two or three weeks to understand what that short-term survival is, but this will go on for however long this period's gonna last. Certainly, certainly it looks like the next couple of months. But then the next level of planning is what will we be like when we come back? So to a business where they've lost 75% of the revenue and aren't able to carry on right now, what can sometimes be um, the, the, the viable plan right now is to go into what we might call hibernation. So this is cost reduction to try and hibernate. If we're unable to trade, keep our cost down as low as possible. That has to be coupled with an analysis of our cash flow forecast because obviously that's going to impact us negatively in cash flow. It might be that we need to look to the bank or the government or all the sources we've been talking about throughout this webinar to try and aid that, that, um, that cash flow gap if there is one. But ultimately, once we've understood that, which is what we would describe as survival, ultimately, we then need to use this time not to sit on the sofa and get bored, but to actually plan. Plan for recovery, plan for how we're going to be different, plan for how our business is going to be in a world that may never return to normal not to, to normal as we once knew it and how we might start to leverage different ways of selling now obviously that's a business by business um, um, issue as to how much that can be done and what needs to be done but that's something that needs to go into a business continuity plan so i hope that answers that question simply understanding how to replace all your lost revenue isn't always going to be the case. If we accept that it's not, we need to safeguard cash flow, we need to hibernate, and we need to plan for how we're going to come back as best as possible. The big problem here would have been what would have happened to our staff in the meantime. The furlough system under the job retention scheme gives us the biggest headache there would have been, and I'm not suggesting there won't be other headaches, but the biggest headache there would have been has been alleviated by the job retention scheme. 
it, it could be worse. There are questions as to how long the job retention scheme will go on and what this is going to cost the government. But as I say, the business continuity plan should be made in two different parts. I hope that answers that question. It's quite, um, it's quite in depth there. I think- Thanks, Steve. Um, I have another question from Jim. Um, do we think there are going to be any further changes to, to single directs of limited companies in, in terms of better financial assistance? Um, my own opinion on that, Jim, is no. Um, I think the um, the eighty percent um, furlough offering um, at the moment for directors is is about as far as they're going to go. Certainly for the time being, um, that's in place till the end of May. Um, it's then going to be reviewed. There may be other measures uh, that come into place after that. We just don't know. It depends obviously on the on the severity um, of the crisis. Um, but my, my own opinion at the moment is no, it's, it, there's nothing else going to be offered um, to directors at this point. Um, Steve, have you got anything else? Yeah, I, I certainly don't have inside tracks there. I think um, the government needs to count the, um, count the money of how much this current period is going to cost them and then work out how long they can extend that period for. I don't think they're going to go deeper into a, a extending more, more um, you know, more types of, of assistance it will be a question now I would suspect of how long this assistance is going to be um, provided for. Absolutely but bear in mind that the tax deferments available that's that corporation tax and pay wide circumstances um, and, and personal tax and, and also bear in mind um, that the CEO scheme under the system driven loan scheme because that is the lifeline. That is what's going to get businesses through, we hope, um, the course of the next few weeks, months, um, when cash is going to be short. Um, so so please consider that. Any more questions, Steve? Yeah, there is one more that I've just been sent through while, while we've been talking here, and that is we talked earlier on about having empathy with your um, with your customers and trying to um, negotiate different ways in which they can be paid and then we've gone on in the seminar to talk about some of the um, some of the service that we're providing and they do carry a fee we've tried as best we can and we genuinely mean this we've tried as best we can to give away free versions of what we're doing so we, we you know businesses are able to build their own continuity plans they're able to build their own cash flow forecast we've then given enhanced versions of those where we'll have more involvement and we are going to be charging for those um, enhanced services because there will be certain companies that want more involvement from us we're we're happy to talk about payment plans on those we've started by we started by cutting our usual rates in half we will talk about um, payment terms on those as well. You know, we work very closely with Go Cardless and we can set up three months, six months payment plans. If, if you want our help on something and the prices at the moment look inhibitive, what I'd suggest is you do just have a conversation with us. A one-to-one -one conversation um, is, is, is generally the way to go. And I hope by that I'm showing that we, we're being empathet empathetic as we're, we're imploring you to be. So, um, I've just got um, a question from, from Joy that's, that's just come in um, regarding the, the, the low payments. Um, yes, Joy, they're being made by a HMRC. Um, the portal is going to be open, uh, according to HMRC, on the 20th of this month, so that's in six days' time. So, that is the first opportunity that we're going to have um, to make. Um, the, the claims on behalf of our clients. Um, now, what we don't know, what nobody knows at the moment, is how long it's going to take for HMRC to process those claims. We just don't know that. But as you can imagine, um, there's going to be an awful lot of claims going through that portal. Those claims have got to be verified, and then and the money has got to go back direct to the claimants. Um, uh, Pretty process, so we just don't know at the moment how long it will take. Um, but the portal will be open uh, on Vegas. And if we do your payroll, then we're going to be making the claim um, on your behalf. Um, if, if not, then um, 
Call us, contact us, and we'll tell you what um, what needs to be done. Take myself off mute. Sorry, I think um, I think there's a little bit of distortion there. I don't know whether it's just me hearing it, but we'll we're nearing to the end anyway. So, thanks for making the time to attend um, on this webinar this afternoon. Um, obviously, we appreciate that your time is, um, is is very valuable right now. I hope this webinar has been of value to you. Certainly, it comes off the back of a lot of um, feedback and conversations that we've been having with our clients. So I hope it's hit on the mark as to what can help you. I'll just leave you with this parting thought. When you show deep empathy towards others, their defensive energy goes down and their positive energy replaces it. That's when you get more creative in solving problems. And that's by Stephen Covey. I'm reading his book at the moment, The Seven Habits of Successful People. Uh, he wrote that book, I think, 20 or 30 years before the, today's uh, crisis, but it could easily have been written in the current times. It's that, um, it's that applicable. So it simply leaves for me and Steve to say, thanks very much for your time this afternoon. Um, I'll, just, I'll just make the point I don't think anything of what we've talked about today is not day-to-day -day general good practice for cash flow management. What we've talked about should be something that's in your business day by day. And one of the good things, one of the things that you should take from this particular period is if you can develop these um, processes or these mindsets now, you can carry them forward into the future. We've not said anything today that is only applicable in a crisis like this. So hopefully some of what you've heard is business as usual and you already have that in place. Perhaps you just need to tweak things once or twice, particularly with, with, with empathy, etc. So as you leave this um, webinar today, you will be um, directed to a, a very short so survey that we've, uh, that we've prepared. If you wanna ask for some of the free resources that we've talked about, that's your chance to do it. Um, put that on and that'll come through and then we'll be in touch via email. Thanks once again for your time and um, I guess we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone. Bye.